Hello and welcome to this week's episode of All About the Balls. This is me, Ollie, and that loud noise you can hear, I think, is my colleague, Gareth. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a uh, squeaky chair. I apologise about the old squeaky chair. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. We could edit yeah. that out, mate. Actually, we know how to edit that out, but we're not going to because this is raw. No, we're definitely not. This is, this is, this is it's all... better than squeaky bum time. It is. Oh, it's a whole different show. Um, Speaking but, of squeaky bum time, there was plenty of that. The Yes. Lord. Yes, well, mate. I mean, shall we just get straight in? Like, first of all, how are you? How are you? Because I know, I know our listeners worry. So, how are you? They, they always, they always want to know. Um, they do. No, I'm, I'm very well. Good. Um, busy weekend, lots of sport. Yes. Um, we're recording this post Man United game, so a bit frustrated after. For anyone who didn't see Paul Pogba missed a penalty. Uh, yeah, to win the game. Which was yeah, yeah, devastating, yeah. especially when I've got Rashford in my fantasy football, which we'll go on to later. Well, yeah, mate, don't. I'm, I'm, I'm very so, unhappy about that. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm all good. How are you? Mate, I'm very good. I'm very good. Uh, yeah, I had a good weekend. And one of the main reasons I had a good weekend was because I saw you, which was fantastic. It yeah, doesn't, got, doesn't, happen, got, doesn't happen often enough, but we got a few pints no. in uh, and we got a little bit of sport. I think, I think we yeah. actually got... Three, we got City Spurs, um, end of England, Wales, and some of the Ashes in as well, all within a right, space of a few it. hours in the pub. It's great. Well, that's, we were all about the balls in a very short space of time. We were. We were balls so, deep in a, in a, in a, we yeah, were, yeah, we were fantastic. But speaking of balls, so. let's, let's, let's dig straight into some balls. Um, so yeah, like you say, Ashes, uh, match two, test two of yep. five, over and done with, draw, um, a a winning draw if there is such a thing which there isn't yes but like a you know a, a winning draw for England I feel um, yeah, I in think, in many ways actually so. partly because of the scoreboard and partly because of the injury to Steve Smith well I mean it was I was I was lucky enough to to get some last minute tickets to um, <gasps> yes to Lord's Day Five uh, which was completely unexpected Saturday evening um, which I just. I had tickets in the debenture section, which are just absolutely corking up there. Really? Is it good? Extra. There's bar up there. There's a terrace. Oh. There's seating above the, behind the chairs. Oh, mate. It's just no queues in the toilet. I mean, it's just, it's great. It's a great experience. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, they are phenomenally expensive, but really? well worth it, I suppose. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you've got the money, everyone with their champagne, oh. their M&S. Everyone MSing it up. And there, there is um, you on the beers. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lads, lads, lads. Me on a can of Stella. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I don't I didn't, I don't drink Stella. Did you oh way, did you did you splash it's way, it's way too continental. I was gonna say, did you splash out? Because normally white lightning, no. isn't it? It's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did have another run in with beer fifty two today, but anyway, that's a whole different conversation. Oh mate, we are uh, we are rapidly falling out. I mean considering I haven't, I haven't cancelled. Have you not? Well, is it that you haven't or is it that you can't because the cancelling no. process is so intricate and complex? No, I, I paused it for three months. Oh, man. So I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, there, there. yeah, so, yeah, so I, was at, I was at the Ashes. Yes. Um, got to see a fantastic Ben Stoke 100. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The boy yeah, yeah. batted brilliantly. He's he's great when he's in the mood like that. He's, yeah. He played a really good, what I would call a good middle order test match innings. Yes. He, you know, came out, made sure that we didn't get ourselves in, in, a, in a pickle. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then, and bad at nice And then when he wanted to hit Nathan Lyons all over the shop, which is always love to see. That's got to feel good, hasn't it? When you're yeah, taking arguably the best spinner in the world at the moment yeah, and has probably, been has been for probably, a few years i think maybe like probably test spinner yeah yeah definitely. yeah 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 yeah. and um so. yeah absolutely launching him to all parts of the ground take that yeah. yes so. but the big news the, well two big news two, two big news two big stories out of um <laughs> out of the mate awful second test first of all archer immediate impact oh Absolute oh. immediate impact. I mean, impact is quite the, is, is the right word as well. He was oh, not yeah. he was knocking Australian batsmen over all yeah. over the place. Um, oh. uh, <clears throat> I have to say, I'm I'm, I'm not going to post this online, but I did see a picture. I think when Steve Smith went down and he's lying flat out on the uh, on the grass, and Joss Butler's leaning over him, and it does. It is the perfect picture for a caption competition. Yes, but and we're I, not going we're to. We're not going to do that. I did send it around a few people, and some of the stuff that came back was oh. massively inappropriate. 
massively brutal. inappropriate. But brutal. I have to say, and we were chatting about this actually, I think on, on Saturday when we were in the pub, I, uh, begrudgingly have, I'm starting to like Steve Smith. Yes. Yes, me too. Um, to be clear, I still hate David Warner. And, yes, and I have never danced such a jig when he got out for another single figure score. Oh, I love it. I, I think, do love it. I think he's averaging 4.5 so far in this Ashes series. Excellent. And long may it continue. But, well, but indeed. Steve Smith, I, I am actually, yeah, I, res- I, I respect the, the grit that it must have taken for him to come back out. Oh insane um the yeah. way he just seems so he seems to have so much time so much time i mean the thing is you and i were chatting before he got before he got um you know taken out yeah literally. yeah um and his batting the day before his movements and his little idiosyncrasies and the way he was doing it was mm. almost to me almost borderline taking the mick yeah, I mean, it was like he was he was saying. I mean, this is just a little bit too easy, so I'm going to try and make this yeah. more, you know more complicated for myself by by I mean, wafting was, around was, all over the place. It was shades of Luke Skywalker <laughs> with, <laughs> with his lightsaber. It, yeah, yeah it with his lightsaber. I mean, only Courtney Walsh can leave like that. Yeah. Um, oh, Courtney! Uh, it's good. It's good when you're likening him to a. 80s 90s west indian number number 11 yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah and and they just but they just can't get him out literally cannot get him out i know um I know. So, so have you heard any so the latest i've heard in terms of his injury is that he might be back for headingly he might be back this week which is i've a, heard he might i've heard it's 50 50 yeah and as a sign of respect i hope he can't play I hope, yes. I, I hope he's injured too badly. I just hope he's injured enough to make a full recovery after this Ashes series. I think for his own that would safety, be fine. they need to rest him. I, I totally agree. It Until is f- probably 2020, I reckon. Yeah. I mean, when's, so. the, when's the next Ashes after this one? <laughs> 2020, so, whatever. Well, I mean, let's, let's play it safe. You can't, you can't yeah. mess around with a head injury. Um, well, yeah. But actually, actually mean, here's, here's a question for you. Here's a question yeah. for you. There... There's been a lot of talk, and I think I've already said on, the, on this show that how uh, impressive it was that he came back out after the head injury. There's been a yeah. lot of talk, though, from various people and like associations and that saying he should never have come back out. For his own well-being, he clearly wasn't compass mentis. He should not have come back out. Where where do you stand on this? As, you know, as, as sports look to put more control over head injuries and, and more processes in place to kind of take the decision away from the player, what, what, what are your thoughts on it? Look, I think you've got to trust the medical staff. Um, mm. they, that, I mean, it's so close to home, that whole head situation because of Phil Hughes. Um, yeah, 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 very true. The, I don't think they would have risked it if he wasn't there. I just think he, he came out and thought I'm just going to have an absolute slap around and see what happens. Yeah. I don't think he was feeling, he probably wasn't feeling great, but mm. look, I don't think they would have sent him out if he wasn't all right. Yeah. But he th- wasn't in the same composed self, but I think no. that's because he just got hit in the head with a 95 mile an hour cricket ball. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one of us would be fine? But like, so exactly. I know they I don't know if, I don't know if they do this in cricket. But I think in some other sports, the HIA is actually done by an independent doctor. It's not done by a team doctor. Um, okay. So again, because I think sometimes there's there's a concern that actually a team doctor is going to feel a bit of pressure to let the yes. player back out. Um, so I think they try and make it a little bit more. But then, but then there's people who say that actually no, it has to be a doctor who knows him because it's all relative. You know, you, you can say, well, actually, no, this guy's always like that. He's always a little bit, you know. <laughs> he never knows what mental. two, two is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why are you asking him that? <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, so I, I don't know. I, I, I'm like, I, I've always been really like love the heroic, tough sport stories of sport when people play on injured and, you know, man, find a way to, to survive and things like that. But longer term, bigger picture and all that malarkey. This head injury yeah. stuff's quite concerning. It is. I mean, I mean, also, so I was. We were lucky enough yesterday to see, obviously, Stokesy get a hundred, and then, mm. um, and then we got to see England bowl and watching Archer. I've I've seen him play for Sussex in yeah. T Twenty yeah, yeah, yeah. last year, um, but 
in that context with the Red Bull implodes, it's actually scary. Really? Of how quick he is. Really? And I was, th- I was thinking about this yesterday. He, look, all these guys have faced 1993, 94 mm. guys before, you know, this... He's not the first guy ever, you know, he's not bowling at 115 miles an hour yeah. when everyone else is 90. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I can't, I think they can't pick his short ball up. Yes. Because he's hitting way too many people way too often. Yeah, that's a... If that, if that makes sense. I, I just no, think it, they it, can't. I, it does, it really does. It, and do you know what, it's an interesting one because I can't remember, I can't remember who it was was saying. It was one of the, I think it's one of the, Either the Test Match Special guys or um, or the Sky Sports commentators, but they're saying that one of the things about his action is that he kind of he runs through the crease on his delivery stride. He doesn't pound down; he almost just skips yeah. through, which I think a lot of big, strong fast bowlers, you know, come in, take a big leap, and then pound that front leg down and really ping the ball into the pitch to get it to get it to shoot up but you're kind of expecting that whereas I think with Archer he's able like I say he's able to get that that kick up off the shorter ball but almost without any kind of leap he just runs through and skips through the crease so it would be really hard to pick there is no change in his action or anything like that and it doesn't look yeah that's that's what someone was saying the other day was it doesn't a lot of quick bowlers have a tell like that their head drops a bit when they bowl a bouncer and Mm. Whereas he, his action is the same if it's a Yorker, slow ball, yeah. ball outside of stump or a bouncer. Yeah. And I think they're just not picking him up, which yeah. it's got to be scary. I mean, it's, it's oh. hard trying to make a decision quick enough anyway, but yeah. And I think that's why, I mean, he hit, obviously he hit, I mean, ironically, Manus Lavaskakni or whatever his name is. Yeah. Try pronouncing uh, that bad boy. <laughs> um, comes on to replace Smith yeah. because of the new, because of the new rule. And ball two gets hit in the head. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was like how many? I hope you've got a few more in the shed yeah. because we're just going to go through them here. I mean, he he got up so quickly though; it was quite. Oh um, yeah, it's like to prove I'm not hurt and I'm yeah. fine. Yeah, there was and uh, every yeah. every England player just ran over to check he was all right. Yeah, um, <laughs> but like, I mean, do you just he's just going to keep hitting people in the head? And the yeah. thing that's the thing, like it it is all well and good. The you know the, um, going out there as a batsman and being uh, concerned about the pace because you know you're worried you you're not going to play it in time or you're going to nick off because you're not there or you know you, you're going to be late on the shot or whatever. But actually being scared, you know, you, you you can't get hit in the head and then not have that in your mind. Well, unless you've forgotten it, but like yeah. you can't get hit in the head and then um, not be concerned about that short ball again. Yeah. You know, you you're naturally you're just the human psychology is just naturally you're not going to be leaning forward. You are just going to be waiting a little bit thinking yeah. I'm going to be rock onto the back foot here. So, you know, surely if he if he, if he does that again at Headingley and then pings in a few full balls early on in a batsman's innings, they're going to struggle. They really are going to struggle. Uh, so, the prediction is going to we need to do two predictions. What's going to be the test match result? Yeah. And will Steve Smith play? If Steve Smith doesn't play, England win. I think I think it's that big a deal. I think it's that big a deal. I really do. So, next question. Yes. Is Steve Smith going to play? No. I don't think he I is. Think so. Yeah, I, I think if he woke up on on the day after with grogginess and, and headaches and things like that, I I I think he's going to take a good few days to get to get over that and I don't think he'll be ready by when did he when did he get hit Saturday didn't he he got hit Saturday so he's got five and he, days and, and he played on Saturday it was then Sunday morning when he woke up and he was feeling sh- feeling shit house. so he's out then that's a technical medical term as well um, yes thank you yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr Matthews Dr Matthews um, paging Dr Matthews <laughs> so, so and then the next test is it Thursday yeah so I guess you know he, they don't. They can put him in the squad. They can put him in the twelve. Is it twelve and then announce? No, yeah, twelve and then yeah. and then and then uh, not play him on the Thursday. So they can give him right up until you know the to- coin toss, I guess. But I don't think they'll play him. I think they'll rest him for this one. Um, I think I think he'll play. And if he plays, and you're and you're Joe Root and Joffrey Archer, I mean, no mercy. 
Yeah. If he's putting himself out there, then he's saying, you know, Bolt, go for your life, mate. You, you've got a. Oh, well, that's, that's the point, isn't it? Because, I mean, I think Archer will. You know, I don't think he, he didn't mean to hurt him. He's just trying to rough no. him up a bit. No, exactly. But, but okay, but so. then on this one, is that then a trap? Um, that actually, you know, you're tempted then to try and rough him up again when actually what you need to do is bowl at the stumps. Bowl at just outside of stumps. Yeah, exactly. Prod away. Yeah, like, you know, he will be anxious. Those first few balls, he will be anxious. So maybe a couple of short ones just to, just to, yeah. you know, just to remind him well, of, of, remind him of it. But then, but then, yeah, just find that line on and outside of yeah. stump and let him, let him get himself it's out. Exciting though. I mean, it Archer is. is properly exciting. Yes. And he's, he's added a whole new dimension to this whole series. It's, yeah. it's really I mean, exciting, especially with Jimmy gone. Yeah. And that's, I think Jimmy's obviously out for the next test match. He might be back for the fourth one. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah, not yeah, convinced yeah. he will be. No, I'm not. I'm um, not. You don't think he's ever going to play again? I, I so. think this could be, I think if he doesn't play this series, I don't think he'll play again for him. Cause I don't think he'll play. England's greatest ever fast bowler. I, and, and it was with a, with a heavy, a heavy heart, mate, a heavy heart, huge Jimmy yeah. fan, but, um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I, I don't think, think he'll think. play. Hmm. So yeah, my prediction is England win nice. because of momentum, because of momentum. Yeah. Um, because we've got Archer. Yeah. He's now got over the first test match. Yeah. And he'll, um, I think he was visibly nervous. Yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't at all. He does <laughs> yeah. not care. He was, he, he was, tw- I think he was be, tweeting. He was tweeting. The guy could basically play in any game. It would be like it's playing club cricket. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just with a bigger crowd. So that would be, that would be one all in the series with two to play. That's exciting. Yes. That's exciting. That would be good. Now, it would be nice if we go into, the oval with the series drawn oh, was ahead. Oh, that would be so, amazing. Just because we're going to be there, it would be more interesting. Yeah, that oh, that would be amazing. Oh, maybe you'll get to boo Warner live. Oh, watch Archer. Don't take him out. Don't tease me. And then that would be amazing. That would be like a, a, a life, life, lifetime ambition done. Um, <laughs> before before moving on though, there was something yes. there was something we wanted to talk about, and it was the England batting struggles. Yes. Um, because both of us, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has noticed, um, but with our amazing analysis and insight, we've noticed that they are, <laughs> they are struggling, particularly the top order. They are really struggling. And it's not like they're just struggling now. They've been struggling for a while, man. That top order yeah. has been so unreliable. And Rick Burns looks better. He does look better. Although, and here's a weird one. Have you noticed his head angle? Yeah. At the moment of delivery. So he's a left hander and it looks like he's got his head pointing <laughs> to his mid on, but that his eyes are watching the bowler. And I'm like, <laughs> Burnsy, Burnsy, what are you doing? Creepy. And it's almost it's like creepy. he's, it's almost like he knows he gets his head too far over to the off stump. And so he has to start with it over here and then whip it, whip it back at the last time. I'm like, Burnsy, what are you doing? Well, that was a lot. There was a lot of chat why he didn't get picked in the last three years is because of his tech. They questioned his technique. Matt, I'm sorry. You just look at Steve uh, Smith. He, I, I well, think te- you know, if he's getting the runs, he's getting the runs. Christ. We, we, it's, not, I mean, it's not like we've got loads of other openers who are doing it at English level, are we? So, uh, well, exactly. Speaking of which, so, Gareth, why aren't we doing it at England level? Well, I think... Hmm. Um, I mean, it's it's the way that the Red Bull is set up, isn't it? I think here, yeah, because the county game, they play half... The first in the sort of April early May mm. they play the first batch of the test you know the four day games yep. and then they um, the county championship and then they play white ball cricket through the good times um, yeah 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 and then when it gets starts becoming autumn they finish the te- the championship yeah so it's it's very much that the ECB have said look white ball cricket is a priority yeah that's when the money is going to be made in the middle of summer and I don't I think that's the problem you know Joe, when he looked at the amount of actual red ball cricket that their top orders played, it was barely none. Now the World Cup is caused a, is a different scenario because it's not normal. Sure. To have this much, but you know, I'd, um, Butler Stokes had not played Bairstow. I don't think he played any red ball cricket before the Ireland Test match. So, so okay. So, just to be clear, are you saying it's because of there's too much focus at the wrong time of year. On, I don't think on it's the a true reflection of, and I think you're getting guys that aren't scoring runs, yeah, because it's tougher to bat. 
yeah. the beginning of the season, at the end of the season, because of the conditions. Okay, is, okay, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, your, your average, you know, I think, uh, I think there's two or three guys in the county championship that mm. average above 40. Mm. You know, that's at county level, yeah. it's not good. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Cash and then used to average 56, 57. You know, it's mm. just, there is a lack of guys being able to do that. And I think it's because of the conditions are much harder. People don't bat as long anymore because the conditions are harder. Mm. And then they go into a white ball scenario. And then, so I think, I think that's what's stopping a flow of people coming through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who you would normally... There isn't enough good players anyway, to me, in all honesty, Red Bull batsmen. Yeah. You know, it's, no, uh, so is that is that partly because of the, the lure of the, I guess, partly the ODI game? But more, even more so, the T20 game. I'm not saying that T20 is like the death of Test cricket or like that. But I'm not trying to be that sloppy. But like saying that there is a lot of temptation for top quality players to try and bat in a in a more of a, t, a quick scoring T20 ODI style than to bat in a a, a four day county game style. You know, as you're coming up th- yeah. through the early stages of your career. Yeah, and I think that's it. I, don't, I just don't think they've. I don't know. I just don't think there's enough emphasis on it. But it's it's because of the money, and that's you know, mm, I don't think mm, that's going to change. Mm. So. so something. So here's a random thought I had. I can't. I don't think I mentioned it last week. I was, I was meaning to, but it's like a random one for you. So like, in rugby and football. So rugby, football, and cricket. Okay, three major sports within 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 England. One of the things that we've often we're struggling with at the moment is the cricket side like you say the test cricket side and i was thinking like i wonder if part of the issue is that there is no there's nothing between county cricket the four-day county games and then international level whereas in say football and rugby you've got the domestic league you've then got you're, league, yeah you've got champions league or, or you know or your UEFA cup or your europa league as it is now for for football, you've then got Heineken Cup and and you know the the other the other like Challenge Cup or Champions Cup and like that for for rugby, and then you've got international. So you are, there there is that extra level up. Whereas in and in IPA sorry in twenty twenty there's almost like there's different standards before you know you've got the IPL which is a very high quality T twenty game. You've got the Big Bash which is uh, not bad. You've then got the Vitality. Vital- you got the Caribbean one. Well, you got the Vitality one back here. So there's different levels, kind of thing, and, and quite good levels of lots of senior players involved, lots of experienced players involved. But at county cricket, there isn't then that next step up before international. But I suppose there's n- no country has that. No, no, no. Sure, but I'm just like I mean, you know, sod everyone else. And but actually- like, but just just in general, like, you know, there. I mean, how many English county players go over and play, say, in the Sheffield Shield down in Australia? Because then you get a fair few of international players coming over and being, you know, playing. They all love it here. It's not that much that goes the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it would be great experience. You know, it'd be yeah. really good experience yeah. to get over there and play on those wickets, play in those different styles of games, yeah. plays in those different conditions. But yeah, it's just an observation yeah. that actually, there's it's kind of county game and and then international cricket, and that's not. That's a, a, that's a that's a that's a big, big jump. That is a, is a big, big jump. jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, we've we've yes. we've rambled. And talking about jumps, um, we we are on to the rugby friendlies. Which do you think there's any point in them in terms of? Mm, yeah, I know. I mean, we've been we were talking about this, weren't we, in the pub? Like, yes, because I love watching rugby, so I'm very happy that they're there. Um, and it's still a good level of passion to beat each other. Yeah, there absolutely is. And like, I, I was at the England Wales game last week at Twickenham and the you know, sellout crowd, great, great atmosphere. It's good for money. Good for money. Absolutely. Um, have we learned anything? I don't think so. Like, we learned that England aren't as good as Wales, but we kind of knew that. We learned that England can be good, but aren't consistent enough. Kind of knew that. Knew that Wales are, 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 are good, but beatable. Kind of knew that. We knew that um, New Zealand losing by a big margin is a way to anger them into absolutely thumping Australia. Yeah, like don't don't poke the bear. Crikey, <laughs> man! Just leave them, leave them be, leave them be. Thanks. We learned that Italy uh, are better than Russia at rugby. Yeah, and. 
and Scotland aren't as good as everyone thinks they are, including wow. you know, including they think they think they are, and exactly. fr- you know France are as as French as ever. So yes. you know, like uh, I don't think we've learned anything new. Or South Africa beat Argentina, sure, yes, great, would have expected that. So yeah, like. I think I think it's good because I think you know they they're getting into some form and building momentum for the World Cup, which is where it really matters. I don't think I've actually learned anything. I don't know if the coaches have learned anything. I mean, they haven't, think they haven't my, told me they have. Do you think it, do you think it's important to be winning into it, going into it, or do you think it's good to get losses and learn? Do you know what I mean? I think it depends who you are. Like I think that the loss, the Kiwis' loss to the uh, Wallabies last week has has done none of us any favours. Like, I would have much preferred the, 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 the Kiwis to just kind of limp along winning or drawing, but not really being impressive until it was too late. Um, uh, I think the Wallabies desperately needed some, some momentum and form. Um, and they kind of threw that away in the last game. I think England need, Eng- I don't know what England need, mate. The England team c- continues to confuse me. I don't know what to make of it. Um, but in summary, I don't think we've learned anything. Excellent. But it was good to have rugby on the TV. It was lovely to have rugby on the TV. Exactly. I don't think any England players got injured. I don't think any England players, which is good. Um, there's that you new- had, um, mm. you had that interesting story that you wanted to share with our listeners from the Wasps rugby player. Yeah. 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 So th- look, this is a little bit, um, a little bit deeper meaningful, actually. Uh, let me try and find this guy's name. So I was just reading this story. Um, uh, on the train on the way home this afternoon, actually, uh, or this evening. And this is a, a former Wasps lock a guy called, Ke- uh, I think it's Kenan, Kenan Mile, um, who toured with England, I think, to Argentina a while ago as well. Played over 200 games for Wasps, Sale and Leeds. So, you know, he's a, a long time, long term pro. Not, not a bit part uh, any, any, by any means. And he, he's now, Pro, uh, promoting, maybe that's not the right word, shining a light on the mental health issues for players. Um, not because of injury, you know, an impact and things like that, like, like the, the HIA stuff, but because of the stress and pressure that is put on players. Like he, you know, he was talking about the, a number of players who, who don't want to go to pre-season or don't want to get called up to England because of the, the pressure in camp. And it's not, it's not fear of injury. It's not fear of the physicality or anything like that. It's the pressure that they are really struggling with. And this guy, this guy's talking about from a very personal point of view. Cause I think I was reading this story in the Guardian. He's saying at one point, where is it? Um, uh, dun, 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 dun. Some point recently, he was on a mid-season break with some of his teammates and almost jumped off a balcony or stepped in, in, in off the fifteenth floor in in a Dubai uh, high rise, and yeah, he I mean, kind of like climbed out. And he, he a, a, a mate came out and found him and dragged him back in, and and, and he said like, "What are you doing?" And he, he I think he even a bit like he wasn't entirely sure that he was gonna do it, or that he, like it, it wasn't a a panicky thing it was just he just wanted it to be over he just wanted the stress and pressure to be gone and that's it's horrific actually, yeah i mean it's mental isn't it when you think everyone wants to aspire so much to get mm. to this point mm. and actually you know the the reality is is a very different thing i mean Moby Natalie's obviously taking a break from cricket yeah um, after after getting dropped yeah 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 yeah, um, yeah 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 it's just it's just a a bonkers situation with the pressure and you know, even I was thinking about it while I was sitting at Lords. Mm, mm. You know, I love, I love playing cricket. I love playing sport, but to be in front of that many people and the pressure—I mean, Jason Roy obviously dropped. Oh, his head but and absolutely, yeah. Out. But, but but thank the, thank that, thank God that, he's scoring all those runs. Well, exactly. I mean, he's making up for it in other ways. Um, but the best part—well, not the best part—the part that made me think this is it's hardcore—is that. Obviously, they're played on the big screen, so you have to watch it. Mm, mm. And then you get the whole crowd going, oh. Yeah. So never mind it's bad enough that you know you've dropped it. Yeah. It's bad enough that your teammates have gone, that's frustrating, but we've got to now be a mate. Um, as Johnny Bairstow does, stares him down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but then you've got the whole crowd going, oh, that was bad. I know. Like, so, I mean, it's, 
And that it, is, uh, I think, that has to have some impact on your player. Yeah, it to is. Be able to, sh- to yeah. be able to just shut it down is quite impressive, I suppose, in itself. Yeah, and like, you know, if, if they are genuinely able to, I guess, create, you know, distance themselves or create a gap between that stimulus and, and any kind of negative emotion, then that's fantastic. But you can imagine a lot of them are actually just, just about coping. And actually yeah. there's going to be something someday when they just, it just, they just snap for whatever reason, exactly. you know, and that's, exactly. that's not good, man. That's not good. No, um, not good. so yeah, so, like I say, it's not, not, not a lighthearted topic, but just something that yeah, I, I read today, yeah. but I read, but happy, I thought, happy Tuesday, happy, happy Tuesday, listeners. everyone. But I thought, yeah, just, um, so. considering you know, we are, we are huge fans of sport, but I think, um, we're also huge, uh, huge fans of, uh, of anyone who sort of takes on that challenge. Like that's, they, they deserve, um, deserve respect. To, to lighten the mood, except David should we Warner. Talk about my fantasy football. Mate, we can do that. We can do that. I'm very happy to talk about fantasy football because for the first time ever, I think I'm beating you, so. Well, I've, I've, I've got, if anyone who wants to join our league, we've got a league and um, we'll actually post the code on social media this week if you want to join the league. Yes. It's, e- it's excellent for your, your self-confidence because you will 100% not be the worst player in that league. Yeah. Gareth and I are both showing, uh, well, backing so, up our quality of prediction yes. with our quality yes. of picking football players. So we we're... multitasking around a multitude of lack of knowledge <laughs> and ability. Um, it's quite impressive. I, I think we've got we're 16 people in our league and I'm a solid 14th or 15th, I think. So. Uh, yeah, you've, uh, you've had a tough week this week, I think. I've had a slightly better yes. week, actually. I'm, I'm slowly climbing yeah. in, into the heady heights of mid table. We've got, we've got the Pitsy Pirates at number one. Oh. Stonking 135. Uh, and uh, Shep FC have, have taken a solid I'd, 134. But no one had a good week. No. It was a bad week but, all round. But I do love some of the names. So we've got uh, one of the names in the league is Your Mum's Athletic. Fantastic. Yes. Um, there's true. also Go Well Spicy from, yes. from fan of the show, Ian Boyce. Um, there's a couple of absolute beauties in there. A couple of absolute yeah, beauties. There's some, there's some good T-boners. Mate, right, can't teach that. We can't teach good that. Good T-boners. Uh, the Untouchables. Hey. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, and one Basaka, two Basaka. That well known, uh, Yes. <laughs> in that sort of position but yeah so yeah we, we, uh, we'll, we'll post that we'll get that out there on uh, yeah. on the social pipe so yeah get involved exactly. get involved jo- join in mate it'd be absolutely so just, hilarious so let's wrap up on the football I see um, obviously Man United drawing mm-hmm. uh, VAR Oh yeah, mate, yeah. I'm I'm done. I'm done with VAR. I'm done. Oh, yeah, as yeah. as the Wolves fans chanted tonight, "Fuck you, VAR." Like, I'm sorry. It is just <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm done with it. How can you not like it? It is okay. I tell, I tell I'll give you several reasons why I don't like it. Okay, shoot. Sh- first you get of three reasons. Okay, three reasons. Right, we were in the pub on Saturday, and I think the perfect example there. You got a text message saying something like, I don't know, something like. Uh, what a goal! What a goal! Final minute, and then a text message thirty seconds later, VAR, yeah. and it, and it disallowed. And that you know, it, people are not. Gonna, it's, the right, it's the right decision. People are not going to celebrate in the. They're going to you know, the ball's going to hit the back of the net, and everyone's just going to stop and go. Well, I mean, should we just wait? And then it well, will get tonight, given. It'll be like, we had that tonight in the in the Wolves game, mate. Ridiculous. But and so that's reason one. That's reason yes. one. Reason two is that I was watching the Wolves game this evening and I think it was where, yeah, for Wolves goal, they then checked the offside and they're showing what the, 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 the video ref's doing. He's drawing these lines on there, like some architectural diagram with like CAD. CAD. He's doing a bit of CAD on the pitch with geometry and a bit of Pythagoras and whatever. And it's like, for the love of God, if the guy was offside, it was millimeters and there is no way that sh- that should not count as a goal but it could have been could have been denied for like a millimeter well, decision mate this is absolutely ridiculous i can't think of a third one but i'm just not i'm, I'm not I'm, happy i'm not happy i'm on um, i'm team team var you so. are you team alan shearer yeah i like it i like it i think <sighs> yeah, oh. we should we will never ever get a decision wrong again so that's good <laughs> Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm i'm wanting to go back a few steps i, I want to jump jump us for goal posts well jump us for goal posts. Lampard 96 again is that what we've got to well, I mean, already poor Frankie boy. 
Paul, Paul, yeah, poor Frankie boys. Get, I, I saw a hashtag fr- oh, nice. l- hashtag lamp out out. And yeah. I was like, Christ, a well, right, 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 couple of weekends into the season. I mean, that's pretty brutal. Just, just drawing a geometrical line out the uh, Stamford Bridge. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Just, just, just getting involved. Far get involved. Actually, yeah. sorry, Frank, you are out. Um, yeah. 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 Please follow. You definitely, you're definitely in the wrong yeah. job. Please, so please follow the dotted line to the exit. Um, but... So I'm not I'm, I'm not I'm not a VAR fan, man. I'm not a VAR okay, fan. Well, hopefully, hopefully, the season time will change. Yeah. Um, but we're going to finish on Timu Puki. Yes. Yes, Puki Puki. Puki Puki. Yeah, exactly. Um, the goal scoring machine that is Timu Puki. Mate, he's on. He's on fire. Top goal scorer in the championship, four goals already. Yep. He's he's been picked in fifteen percent of the champ of the fantasy football teams. Is he really? Is he really? Um, but it's so four, he's, four goals he's... in two games. Mate, you take that all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And prolific. Do you know how much? They, do you know how much Norwich got him for? Uh, no, but he was free. Eighty million. Eighty million. Right. No, that's sorry. He, he's not quite as good business as Harry Maguire. Um, <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, he, was on a free. he was free. He was free when they when they signed him. I think uh, was it a couple of seasons ago. If they're free transfer, um, I think love that you still get some. No one's. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Is not true. Yeah, yeah. You get a free pookie. Free pookie. Free pookie. Free pookie. Yeah, free pookie. <laughs> um, yeah. So big, uh, big, big. Uh, you know, whole, whole, oh, uh, but hear me now. Believe me later. Pookie to be uh, golden boot. Come the end of the season. Well, we shall see. We shall see. But let's end. On the fixtures, and there is a tasty, tasty half five kickoff on Saturday, is the twenty first of August. Is there? And it is um, the second biggest team in Liverpool are playing the second biggest team in North London. So we've got you Liverpool filled the animal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. All we've right, got Liverpool, Arsenal, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is going to be good. That, I mean, th- th- these are the games. That, well, I say these are the games that define Arsenal's season. Normally, it's actually a two 0 home loss to bloody Watford or something. But yes, um, yes this will be this will be interesting. Interesting to see actually. Prediction uh, at Anfield. Oh, I think I think Liverpool two 0 To be to be to be, to be brutally right. honest, I mean. I'm going to go three one. I'm going to write these down. We need to keep a track of these. Three one. Well, at least three, well, at least Arsenal scored. Um, so, we, and we both think England to win. England to win the test. England to win the test. England to win the test. Um, Liverpool three one. There is. Um, there's got to be some rugby on as well, isn't there? Another warm up game this weekend. I don't know. Let's have a little goosey. What have we got? England. Up, oh, England. England. Ireland. At three o'clock on um, on Saturday. Oh, what I do like you reckon? Uh, England like at home. England at home. I'm going to go. No idea whether they're playing like a full strength team or anything like that. But I'm going to go Ireland. Ireland to win. Oh, breaking my heart. Twenty four nineteen. Oh, that may that be a good game. That'd be a yeah, good game. I'll take um, that. I'll take that. I think England will win. Um, I think England will win eighteen twelve. Oh, um, good, good, solid victory. Yeah, yeah, exactly, so. exactly. Um, so, mate, uh, and, mate and another another week, another week down, another week down, another bit of excellent I sport. I know. Uh, I team Var and team Pookie all the way. Uh, I, I'm well on board the Pookie bandwagon. <laughs> Sounds like a disco from the 1970s, but I'm well on board the the, the, the Pookie bandwagon. I'm not on board far. Actually, two shout outs. If anyone's listening still to the show, well done. Uh, but two shout outs. It, does any, if anyone is or knows, um, a sort of a sports psychologist or like well-being person or something like that, that would be really interesting to talk to. Um, and also if anyone knows anyone apart from Gareth who likes VAR, um, if they want to get involved and be, be interviewed on the show, that would be really interesting as well. Yes. Cause I, cause yeah, we, we'd like to dig into those kind of topics a little bit more. So anyone who's like a sports psychologist, sports psychiatrist, anything like that, and anyone who can explain why on earth far is a good idea, that would be wonderful to hear from you. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, great. Well, buddy, take uh, care. Own. Apologies for my squeaky chair. Well, I'll have to edit that so, out, Christ. Yes, exactly. Uh, but thank you very much. Have an excellent week, my friend. You too, buddy. Cheers. Go well. Bye.